having expired, I now recognize uh, Ms. Clark of New York for five minutes of question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member, uh, and thank you to our panelists today. Mr. Chairman, um, I've heard uh, oftentimes, particularly when, count, when uh, dealing with this subject matter of um, left-wing organized violence, um, a, a lot of time spent on talking about uh, violence that has caused damage to property. But they seem, but, but colleagues seem to be omitting certain examples. So I want to make sure that we uh, correct the record. Here we have an example, uh, and this is the aftermath of the Oklahoma City bomb. That is some serious property damage. As a matter of fact, it's $652 million worth, in fact. Uh, the Oklahoma City bombing was famously a right-wing attack against the federal government, which may be why my colleagues don't talk about it. Though, to be honest, I care much less about property than I do about human lives. Tragically, the Oklahoma City bombing was also incredibly lethal, killing approximately 168 people and injuring an additional 680, making it the deadliest act of domestic terrorism in United States history. I highlight this to show that right-wing movements in this country have a long history of violence, a long history of being more violent than left-wing movements, but this is nothing new. What is new, though, is the extent to which the Republican Party has enhanced and embraced and encouraged violence, especially under the extreme MAGA cult of Donald Trump. Let's talk about what has happened to the GOP over the past several years. In 2015 and 2016, throughout his campaign for president, Donald Trump encouraged violence against protesters at his rallies saying protesters should be roughed up and that his supporters should, quote, knock the hell out of them. He said attacks on protesters were, quote, very, very appropriate and something that, quote, we need to do a little bit more of. Republicans had plenty of opportunity and time to recognize what kind of politician Donald Trump was, and they fell in line to support him. After Trump was elected, right-wing violence went from bad to worse. Here, we all know this photo. This is the photo from the Unite the Right rally held in 2017, during which a self-identified white supremacist rammed his car into a group of counter-protesters, killing one person and injuring dozens of others. Some might call that a domestic terrorist attack. In fact, the driver pled guilty to 29 federal hate crimes. And uh, Ms. Metalnik helped hold the rally's planners liable for planning a violent attack. And I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication to our nation. At this time, President Trump said in the aftermath of the rally that there were very fine people on both sides of the rally, which encouraged white nationals. Here's a photo. of Portland, Oregon in 2020. My Republican colleagues have highlighted property damage resulting from these protests, but to me, the most troubling aspect of these protests was that Trump's Department of Homeland Security confirmed that police without identification were using unmarked vehicles to arrest protesters. Unif ununified federal police, unidentified federal police were kidnapping protesters in unmarked vehicles. And the Trump administration's actions in responding to these protests encouraged vigilante justice, chaos, and violence, not law and order. While in office, Trump also did the following to encourage violence, labeled the news media, quote, the enemy of the people, encouraged police officers to be tough with people they arrest, encouraged the shooter, the shooting, of looters, praised law enforcement for an extrajudicial killing, and told the Proud Boys, a group so vile as to have been labeled a terrorist entity in Canada, 
to stand back and stand by, galvanizing the group according to their own words and helping to instigate planning for January 6th. That brings us to one of the darkest days in American history, the failed insurrection the of January 6th. General Lady's time has expired. Uh, All right, but we have many I examples. I recognize Mr. Chairman. Crane of Arizona for his five minutes of question. Thank you guys for coming.